I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination CCNA and Network Plus 2009 certification exam training video where we're going to look at the theory of virtual LANs and also look at one popular reason for creating them in production networks. We're also going to configure one on a live Cisco switch and kind of look out for a side effect, if you will, that we have to be careful about when we're actually configuring virtual LANs. Let's take a look at the lab that we're going to work with today first. And here we're going to have four hosts connected to a Cisco switch, and that is the universal symbol for a switch. So you should be prepared to look at that on any CompTIA or Cisco certification exam and recognize this is a switch without being told. And one of the default behaviors of that switch is that by default all hosts connected to a switch are in one large broadcast domain. Now we know that when they're connected to their own switch ports as they are in this lab that means each host is in its own individual collision domain but still when one host sends a broadcast every other host connected to the switch is going to get a copy of that. That's generally not desirable behavior. It depends on the size of your network, of course, where the impact comes in, but that's a lot of extra broadcasts going around your network, taking up bandwidth. They also have to be handled by the switch and by the receiving host, and generally it's just not necessary. So that's one reason for using virtual LANs. I'll scroll down to the actual IP addresses we're going to use in this lab. We've got four hosts connected to a single switch. They're all in the same subnet so we shouldn't have any trouble with IP connectivity. And we're going to bring the pod up here in just a moment and we'll start on host 1. I am using Cisco routers for the host devices so the pings will look a little different but the concepts remain the same. So let's send that out and again let's take a look at our addresses. It's 172.34.34.0 and the last octet being the host number. So we'll send those around since we just brought these up. We expect perhaps to lose that first ping packet, but after that we should see 100% connectivity. And I'll go ahead and ping 2, 3, and 4 while we're here, and you'll see that we do get that 100% now. And again, even if you think you've got your connectivity set for a home lab, go ahead and test it as I'm doing here because I'm positive I had the connectivity but it never hurts to send it around and just takes an extra minute or two we'll send some pings here from router 3 we're looking good there we'll send another 4 there and we're good to go and we'll go out to router four, host 4 in this case And our connectivity looks good. Now we're also going to take a look at our switch that these are all connected to because by default on Cisco switches all of your access ports, the ports that belong to a single VLAN, are going to be in VLAN 1 by default. And you can see here that it kind of skips from 9 to 13. 10, 11, and 12 are not in the list and this is obviously a 24 port switch. The key to remember is if a port is trunking, you're not going to see it in show VLAN brief. And those three ports on this switch are trunking with another switch. We'll cover that in another video, but definitely something to watch out for there. If a trunk is, excuse me, if a port is trunking, you are not going to see it in show VLAN brief. So we've got our connectivity, but like I said, one issue with this is they're all in one broadcast domain. And you might look at this and say, well, Chris, is that a big deal with four devices? Maybe not, but most of your Cisco switches, of course, in production networks are going to have a lot more than four hosts connected to them. You could have 12, 24, 48, 96, and so forth. So what we will probably do is create virtual LANs. And I'll scroll down to what we're going to create here. And we're going to put hosts 2 and 4 in their own VLAN. And that way we're already cutting the number of broadcasts or potential broadcasts just about in half. Because when we put hosts 2 and 4 in their own VLAN, when one of them sends a broadcast, only the other device in the same VLAN will get it. The hosts in other VLANs, in this case 1 and 3, will not receive the broadcast. So let's go back to our switch and take care of that. The switch port, mo switch port mode access command 
makes a port an access port, it cannot possibly trunk, and that's what we like to do when we're putting a port into a VLAN. We need to follow that with the switch port access VLAN command, and that's followed by the number of the VLAN that you're putting that port into. Let me go to FAST04 instead. And switch port access VLAN 24. Note the line access VLAN does not exist for creating VLAN 24. If you attempt to put a port on a Cisco switch into a VLAN that does not yet exist, the switch will dynamically create it for you. So that's a good deal. And that's why you didn't see it again after we put 04 in there, is that the uh, VLAN at that point does exist. We always trust, but we always verify. So let's run show VLAN brief again. And you'll note that VLAN 24 has been created. It is active. And we see that ports 2 and 4 are now in the VLAN. So we've done that, and that's fantastic. Now, of course, after any change in your configuration, you need to test your IP connectivity. So let's go back out to host 1 and try to ping 34.4. And when you start getting those that many dots, you know you're in trouble because your IP connectivity is gone. Let's try pinging dot three from host one. No problem there. And let's try dot two. It's looking pretty rough too, isn't it? Yeah, we're not going to have that connectivity. Host one can only ping host three right now because those are the devices in the same VLAN. They're both still in VLAN one. Without getting layer 3 involved somehow, the routing process, you're not going to have successful inter-VLAN communication. So that's the trade-off I was mentioning earlier. The good part is you're going to have fewer broadcasts. The bad part is you're not going to have any kind of communication at all between your VLANs right now until you get routing involved somehow. And we'll go to host 2 since that's the device in VLAN 24 with host 4. And you can see that host 2 can ping host 4 with no problem at all. But when we try to ping dot 3 or dot 1, those are not going to go through. And I'll go ahead and terminate that ping since we know it's not going to go through. Did you notice that the Cisco devices say type escape sequence to abort but don't tell you what that is? I'll just tell you quickly, it's control shift 6, control shift 6. You just do one right after the other and that will terminate your ping. So you can see that's the trade-off we have to watch out for when we create more VLANs. We have to get layer 3 involved somehow because right now we're strictly at layer 2. We're on a layer 2 switch. So one, we need to do one of two things, and I'll scroll past this and look at your two options here. You either need to use a technique called router on a stick, and I kid you not, that is the name of it, or use a layer 3 switch for that particular switch. Now, that is a switch that has routing capabilities as well, and we'll have videos on that for you in the future, but for your CCNA exam in particular, you really need to know the configuration and troubleshooting of router on a stick. But until you get layer 3 involved in that particular scenario, and I'll bring that back up for a moment, scroll back up, you are not going to have any kind of inner VLAN communication without layer 3 getting involved somehow. So that's the trade-off we have to look out for with VLANs. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this particular video for over 300 additional Cisco and Microsoft tutorials. I invite you to come out to the website, thebryantadvantage.com slash tutorials.htm. We've also got a new dedicated Network Plus 2009 certification website, networkpluscertification.com. And also our famous CCNA Mastermind webinar series is now on demand. It's just like being at the live 25 plus hour CCNA webinar, but now the thousands of you who wanted to attend but couldn't do so because of the time zone conflicts, uh, your questions have been answered and we will be offering this on demand so you can watch the sessions when you're ready and not on someone else's schedule. Again, thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.